So this is more like a typical gaming rig. In fact, this isn't even that big. This is just a standard case with seven expansion slots, an ATX board, and you know, it accepts a couple of graphics cards. But this build guide with the GeForce GTX Titan, and I'm gonna just ground myself there before I touch it. The GeForce GTX Titan is going to focus on a different sort of gaming rig. The Titan, because of its incredible acoustic performance, that is to say low noise, low power consumption compared to something like a GTX 690, and outstanding performance enables a new class of small form factor gaming machines. So we're gonna be using a 3770K, which is about as fast as it gets for a gaming CPU, an Asus P8Z77i Deluxe Wi-Di motherboard, 16 gigs of Corsair Dominator Platinum memory, an OCZ Vertex 4 SSD, and a Seasonic 550 watt power supply. And last but not least, a low profile CPU cooler from Thermalright. This is the AXP100. All of this in a 19.2 liter Cubitech Mini Cube case. Now we could have fitted in our FTO3 Mini with a little bit of modification of one of the brackets, but we opted not to do that. So instead we're gonna go with a case that natively supports it. Once we're done, we're gonna show you, I mean performance numbers later, but once we're done this, we're gonna show you how it sounds compared to a 7970 when it's installed in a small form factor chassis like this. All right, so it's update time, guys. There was no way those Dominator Platinums were gonna fit in this rig, unfortunately, because there's a slight overhang with the memory slots from the CPU cooler itself. So we went with a low profile Kingston HyperX memory kit that just barely touches the heat sink. So it should get some, you know, incidental cooling from the downdraft CPU cooler. I could have installed a larger CPU cooler. In fact, you can see, if I put this down in the case, I haven't installed the standoffs yet, but if I put this down in the case, you can see that my CPU cooler could have gone up to here, but I like using a downdraft CPU cooler in a build like this, and I like giving uh, you know, the Titan and cable management some, some room, so I'm, I'm gonna go this route and see how it sort of turns out here. Speaking of the Titan, I'm gonna go ahead and put the GeForce GTX Titan inside the case just to show you guys what this is gonna look like once it's all beasted out here. And we've made some more changes. So instead of the sort of fail, thin, low profile fan that we were gonna use, we're not gonna use that anymore. We've done away with it and gone with some Noctua NFF12 fans instead. So there's our intake at the bottom front here. Nice high pressure optimized fan. So we're gonna be able to draw air under the case, around the feet, and then up inside. That'll go straight to the Titan GPU. Then I've added another one on the CPU with an adapter that gives more incidental airflow to the VRM as well as the memory. We've also added our power supply. So this is in an 80 plus gold Seasonic 550 watt power supply with a modular interface. You can see I've run my SATA cables. So just for lols, I've changed the scope of the build again, and we are actually going to install all of the, uh, well not all, but we're gonna do two two and a half, um, two and a half inch drives and two three and a half inch drives just for the lols to show you guys what kind of an insane super gaming computer you can fit inside this kind of an enclosure. All right, here's the moment you've all been waiting for, guys, assuming you're still with us this far into the video, where we squeeze the 10 and a half inch Titan graphics card into this extremely narrow, narrow spot where it hopefully will fit. Um, Okay, we're putting a little bit of strain on those front panel connectors, but I think it's okay. And I think that we are in. Let me just double check. There's no PCIe lock on this particular card because it's, uh, it's a uh, reference board, but I think we're in there. So let's go ahead and screw it in. Here we, whoops, see daisies. And let's go ahead and screw it in. Well, if I was smart, I would have done the bottom screw first so that it would hold it in place. Well, that's okay, that one worked. There we go. All right, that is one dense system. Very dense, not, not dense in a stupid way. I'm tired, it's late. 
made quite a few videos today. So there's not much to say other than I'm really trying to trying to get this graphics card in here. And uh, thumb screws are both a blessing and the bane of my existence at times because sometimes they're just more awkward to put in actually. And uh, right now I'm having one of those moments and you guys are getting to enjoy it with me. There we go. Ah, yes. So we are tightened out now, but obviously the system won't boot because Titan does require external power. So you can see here, this intake fan is gonna bring fresh air directly to that graphics card. And then the CPU is gonna be able to hopefully sort of somewhat fend for itself up there. And uh, here, my PCI Express connectors. So these ones, I didn't realistically think I was gonna be able to run them uh, from the back which is fine anyway, because the, the GPU itself is right here. So I'm just gonna run those down here. Again, if I was smart and less tired, I would have run these before. The important thing to note about this build, guys, is that no shortcuts have been taken, no special parts have been used. You can build your own extremely small form factor gaming machine for the, well, however much this costs, I don't even know at this point. It's not cheap, but it'll be awesome. And that's the most important thing. So we'll be back once I figure out how to do this. So here we go, guys. This is the insanity that is the back of this machine. So I ended up going with two Samsung 840 Pros. So that would be 512 gigs of RAID 0 SSD storage. Then I went with two Western Digital 3 terabyte hard drives. So in theory, you could have dual 512 gig SSDs and then two 4 terabyte hard drives back here. Now, there was no hope in using the actual mounting points for the SSDs, which is fine because the SSDs have no moving parts, so I'm not really worried about um, them randomly busting anyway. Now, we've tried pressing this flat and we're pretty sure it's going to close, but I guess you guys are going to find out with us. Um, no, no, it's okay. I got it whether it will actually close or not. This one, and yep, looks like it. So we haven't added the Titan to the system yet, but that's coming next. That's actually the last step. We also have not yet added the PCI Express power cables needed to power the Titan. However, I've made sure that there is room to install it. So this, this computer will have four cores, eight threads, up to 16 gigs of RAM of the most powerful single GPU graphics card. Um, it'll be pretty much near silent because we're using all Noctua coolers and the Titan itself is extremely quiet. Check that out. That actually did close. Wow, look at that. See? Look at that. Just awesome. So that is what she looks like from this side with the cable management available in this Cubitech case, which is actually not bad. So we'll be back in a moment once I've screwed in the power supply, which I just realized I forgot to do. And we're gonna show you guys the moment where we put the Titan inside. So basically that's it guys, check it out. These cables are, are managed back here. So they're just kind of wrapped around this Noctua fan here at the bottom. Um, the Noctua fans are both plugged into the motherboard, so we can use motherboard control to control that fan. GPU Boost 2 will control the GPU temperatures, the fan RPM, as well as the GPU clocks. And we are pretty much ready to boot this bad boy up. I mean, I think the only way we could actually stuff more technology in here is if we didn't even worry about connecting it to anything and we just kind of, you know, there, there's a, there's a pile of SSDs and like, there, there's some more SSDs, and there's a phone, and like some memory, like another more different phone. There you go. That's the only way we could actually make this more densely packed. It's all falling. We'll be back. Our Titan machine is done, so we'd love for you guys to join us for the moment of truth where we actually try and boot this bad boy up. So let's go ahead and press the button. <gasps> okay, give it a sec. And there we go. Oh, that's beautiful. And let's try that one more time. Just checking it out. See how it goes. Did it go? Yeah. Oh, that looks so good. Does that look as good in the camera as it does? Oh, okay. 
She's up. She's awake. Overclocking failed. Yeah, don't worry about it. It's all good. Um, I don't think we have any overclocking running on this board. So you got my like late night building computer snacks. Uh, okay, give me a sec here, guys. So we're going to get into the OS, and we'll be back in a moment. Okay, guys, so I've actually switched to this microphone so that uh, we can take some audio levels. Now, we haven't actually closed the system up yet, but we're running uh, Far Cry 3. I can't show you any benchmarks right now, just so you guys know. But um, we're going to do a couple of reference sounds for you guys so you can get some idea of how a system like this might run. The first thing we have to... Oh, right, oh, yeah, I need to be over here. The first thing we have to do is actually put the side panel on just to demonstrate that Titan can run in a configuration like this. So let's just get some more, let's get a couple more glam shots of what the system looks like inside. We've got some uh, LED lighting, courtesy of a Bit Phoenix Alchemy strip up there. Uh, I mean, if you were worried about the sort of perfect aesthetics, then you might go with something other than Noctua fans, but I love the performance of these fans, and this rig is all about performance. So we've readjusted our microphone because we couldn't actually pick up the noise of the system when it was at idle, but we're under full load now. So running Prime 95 small FFT on the 3770K and running Far Cry 3 looking at a fire uh, to, to stress the Titan. Now I can't tell you guys any exact numbers or benchmarks yet as of the time of filming this video, but what I can tell you is that GPU boost is still working very well, more than the promised GPU boost clock, significantly more, and uh, actually that's a good idea. And just for reference, we're going to make some different noises here to show you guys just how quiet this system is. So we're going to drop a coin onto a wooden table. I'm going to call a Galaxy S3 that's set to vibe. we're going to show you, I mean, it's funny because old NVIDIA cards used to get compared to hair dryers. So let's do the old hair dryer test. So this is on low. There's the system again for reference. We're really impressed with this system. Here are the, uh, here's the hair dryer on high. So Temperatures, I'll say this much, temperatures for the GPU are very comfortable, so it's still boosting. Oh, right, I need to be closer to the mic. Temperatures for the GPU are very comfortable. It is still boosting, like I said, past the rated minimum sort of boost clock that you should see. And temperatures for the CPU, I'm allowed to talk about those, are at about 80 degrees. So this system is very functional, very well within its operating sort of specifications and uh, ambient temperatures though are a little bit on the low side in this room. Slick, could you go ahead and press that green button for me so I can just see what the temperatures are in here? So it's about 11 degrees in here. So you'd probably hit, let's say in a normal room, you'd hit more like 90 degrees on the CPU, which is still, you know, this is during an unrealistic load. Prime 95 small FFT plus a game running. Um, and then that GPU probably wouldn't boost quite as high, but the system would work. Thank you for checking out this build log and sort of mini ITX Titan guide on Linus Tech Tips. Don't forget to subscribe for more unboxings, reviews, and other computer videos.